You're looking awfully orderly. Awful formal, doesn't it? <laughs> well, hello, everyone. My problem is I'm getting to like these people too much. We're going to get one another in trouble, I'm afraid. Today, uh, the leaders on this stage are joining together to make what, and it's, over, it's an overused phrase in international relations and public life, to make a historic commitment, because it is a historic commitment we're about to make. 20 countries coming together to launch the Los Angeles Declaration on Migration and Protection. With this declaration, we're transforming our approach to managing migration in the Americas. Each of us, each of us is signing up to commitments that recognizes the challenges we all share and the responsibility that impacts on all of our nations. And that uh, that would take all of our nations, and this is I've learned by significant experience, can take all of our nations working together in partnership to address this migration issue. The past few years, the global economic crisis, triggered by COVID-19 pandemic, is now made worse by Russia's war in Ukraine and the political turmoil from, auto, from uh, uh, excuse me, auto, 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 autocracies, regimes in, in our region, has led to record levels of migration, not just to the United States. Colombia has hosted millions of refugees from Venezuela. Right now, Migrants make up as much as 10 percent of the population of Costa Rica. And no nation should bear this responsibility alone, in my view, our view. The economic futures depend on one another. Each of our futures depend on one another. And the, our security is linked in ways that I don't think most people in my country fully understand, and maybe not in your countries as well. Our common humanity demands that we care for our neighbors by working together. Los Angeles Declaration is built around four core pillars. First, stability and assistance, making sure communities that are welcoming refugees can afford to care for them, to educate them in their education, medical care, shelter, and job opportunities. Second, increasing pathways for legal migration throughout the region, as well as protections for refugees. Third, working together to implement a more humane and coordinated border management systems. And finally, making sure we're working together to respond to emergencies. You know, we know that safe, orderly, and legal migration is good for all our economies. But we need to halt the dangerous and unlawful ways people are migrating, and the dangerous ways. Unlawful migration is not acceptable and will secure our borders, including through innovative, coordinated actions with our regional partners. Working these efforts simultaneously, though, humane policies that secure borders and support people representing groundbreaking integrated new approaches. It addresses the needs of vulnerable migrants and the needs of countries hosting those migrants. That's why it has the support of the United Nations High Commissioner on Refugees and the International Organization for Migration. And that's why so many nations, again, 20, representing the entire migration route from Chile to Canada, were eager to sign up to be part of this shared solution and have stepped up with their own major commitments. I particularly want to thank President Chavez of Costa Rica and President Lasso, who you'll hear from in a minute, of Ecuador, for your new commitments to support and protect migrants in your countries. So you have the chance to stay and begin to rebuild your lives where they are. And like many others, countries in the United States 
are stepping up with significant commitments as well. To help our partners in the region continue to welcome refugees and migrants, we're providing economic support. For example, more than $300 million in new funding for humanitarian assistance for countries in the region, so when migrants arrive on their doorstep, they can provide a place to stay. Make sure migrants can see a doctor. Find opportunities to work so they don't have to undertake the dangerous journey north. And we're going to provide millions more, including through the World Bank, to support countries and communities that are carrying the greatest responsibility for migrants. For example, Colombia received $800 million last year. Not enough, but $800 million that year will help respond to the influx of refugees from Venezuela. And there's more we'll do working with the World Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank. We're also expanding opportunities for people to come to the United States lawfully. In the next two years, we'll resettle 20,000 refugees from the region. In addition, we recently resumed the Cuban Family Reunification Program, parole program. We're resuming increasing access to the Haitian Family Reunification Parole Program, with a goal of admitting 20,000 per year per country. And on this jobs front, our Department of Agriculture is launching a pilot program funded by the American Rescue Plan to help American farmers bring in seasonal agricultural workers from northern Central America, countries under the H-2A visa program, to improve conditions for all workers. The program was designed in cooperation with the United Farm Workers and through the close consultation with farmers, farm workers, unions, and other stakeholders. We're also dedicated to an additional 11,500 H-2B non-agriculture temporary work visas to open opportunities for workers from Haiti and northern North Central uh, American countries. Mexico, Guatemala, Canada, and Spain are also making commitments today to expand labor pathways to their countries as well. And in addition to securing our border and bringing order to the asylum processing in the United States, the Department of Homeland Security is leading the first-of-its-kind campaign to disrupt human smuggling in the region. If you prey on desperate and vulnerable migrants for profit, we are coming for you. We are coming after you. In the first two months of our anti-smuggling campaign, the United States has worked with our partner nations to raid stash houses, impound vehicles, use smuggling operations for use for smuggling operations, and we made more than 1,800 arrests. And as we speak, Mexico and the United States are conducting what is known as mirror patrols, joint operations to interdict criminals attempting to illegally move drugs and migrants across our borders. This is just a start. There's much more work remains to state the obvious. Every country needs to work together to maintain a humane and orderly immigration process, to invest in securing the borders, screening and registering migrants who enter their countries, and repatriating those that do not qualify to remain. I hope more countries will see the potential for joining the Los Angeles Declaration. And I want to thank all of my fellow leaders on this stage for committing to this historic new vision for our region. And now, I'd like to invite President Lasso of Ecuador to say a few words. And thank you all very, very much for your patience. Thank you very much, President Biden. Thank you very much, President Biden, for this invitation. It has been truly an honor to be in this summit, accompanied by this distinguished group of presidents of the Americas. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important for the region to continue the dialogue to promote, to promote safe, regular, and orderly migration. 
identifying actions that translate into public policies that promote development and inclusion in an environment of peace and security and frame, framed in the protection of the human rights of people in human mobility. Therefore, I welcome this summit and the political will expressed by the heads of states and delegations present here to work with the objective of strengthening coordinated actions in this area. The socioeconomic situation aggravated by the effects of COVID-19 has led to an increase in irregular migratory flows with humanitarian, socioeconomic, and security implications. Today, more than ever, it is necessary to generate joint actions to assist migrant sending and receiving countries, promoting a comprehensive development agenda that has the uh, human being, our uh, government, as its central axis. Our governments within the framework of international migration governance are working in a coordinated manner to combat to combat the structural causes of irregular migra migration. In this context, it is urgent on the one hand to promote development opportunities in the countries of origin, and on the other hand, through coordination and cooperation between countries, to promote actions to identify and dismantle the transnational mafias that control irregular migration. Ladies and gentlemen, Ecuador is a country of transit, origin, reception, refuge, and return of migrants with a legal and institutional framework that responds to these different facets of migration in an effort to guarantee the protection of the human rights of people and mobility. My country has granted recognition of refugee status to a total of 72,229 people, most of them Colombian nationals being a worldwide reference, becoming the country with the largest number of refugees in the region. In recent years, Ecuador has also received migrants, mainly uh, Venezuelan nationals, being uh, one of the three main recipients of this, immigration, this migration in Latin America. As I reported recently, Ecuador decreed a process of regulation of migration and we hope to benefit more than half a million citizens of Venezuela, mostly, and some other nationalities. In this is essential for those countries that are receiving migrants. We hope the cooperation of uh, the donors who strengthen the, politi the politi policies of migration to, to fa uh, benefit this population. Finally, I would like to emphasize that the mig migratory phenomenon is significant and demands joint actions under the principle of shared and differentiated responsibility among the countries of the region with respect for the human rights of migrants, norms, international standards and the national legis legislation of the countries of this region. Thank you very much.